Hello everyone. We conducted a poll on the community tab and this was the question. Out of 6500 students who attempted the question, only 3% gave the correct answer. This question was purely concept based. Such type of questions are asked in need. So you need to prepare your concept so well that you are able to answer such type of questions. I'm going to tell you what is the correct answer. This question is based on Krebs cycle and it starts with if. If means if this happens, this is not the normal process. So if a phospholipid enters into Krebs cycle, then how many ATPs will we get? Phospholipid molecule is made up of one glycerol and attached to it are two fatty acid tails or chains. So if one and there is phosphate also, phospholipid, so this is glycerol, this is fatty acid. If one phospholipid enters the Krebs cycle, then what will happen? So let us say this is the phospholipid. Phospholipid is going to break down into glycerol and two fatty acids. Okay, so when it enters, then what happens? If you remember, glucose is broken down into pyruvic acid. But we will write down one step. That is 3-phosphoglycerol dehyde. 3-PGAL. Then this 3-PGAL is going to give us pyruvic acids. Two molecules of this. This is from one glucose, right? So let us, to avoid confusion, let us write down just one number, pyruvic acid. So here is this pyruvic acid. Pyruvic acid changes into acetyl coenzyme A. And acetyl coenzyme A then participates in this Krebs cycle. So this is our Krebs cycle. Now this glycerol which is formed, it actually changes into 1-PGAL. And the two fatty acids which are formed, they change into the acetyl coenzyme A. That means when it enters this pathway, it is going to join here and it is going to join here. So if it joins here, then from PGAL to pyruvic acid, we get 1NADH2 and we get 2 ATPs. 1NADH2 is worth 3 ATPs plus 2 ATPs, this will give us 5 ATPs here. Pyruvic acid when changes into acetyl coenzyme A, we get 1NADH2, that is 3 ATPs. Acetyl coenzyme A participates in Krebs cycle, we will get 12 ATPs. So 12 plus 3 plus 5, 12 plus 3 plus 5. This gives you 20 ATPs. So one glycerol is going to give you 20 ATPs. Now this fatty acid starts here, it joins here, so it forms one acetyl coenzyme, second fatty acid, second acetyl coenzyme. Krebs cycle gives us one, uh, one Krebs cycle gives us 12 ATP. So with one acetyl coenzyme 12, with the second acetyl coenzyme 12, so it is 24. Total 44 ATPs. This is your correct answer. This is purely concept based question. Some of you wrote that phospholipids do not participate in this. I know they do not participate. And that is why the question started with if. Some students wrote, wrote that phospholipid will undergo beta oxidation of fat. Phospholipid is a part of plasma membrane. And that doesn't come and take part in this breakdown, ATP generation. But here there are two concepts which are checked. One, do you know what is a phospholipid made up of? It has one glycerol and two fatty acid. It is a diglyceride fat. Second concept, do you know that glycerol joins where and fatty acid join where? Third concept, do you know the complete aerobic breakdown? So one question 
where your three concepts were checked. Such type of questions are asked in need and that increases the difficulty level of the exam. So focus on your concepts and you should be able to attempt such questions correctly.